in the back of the slums. Woo! That joint that on, on this Lazatola album called Back of the Slums. Different. You heard Bustello gang in the building. Even though it's two cash, I'm bugging out. I went to the store like, yo, I gotta go on live. I gotta get some coffee. Then I bought this big ass cup of Bustello, and I said, it's two o'clock though. What am I? What am I doing, bro? Just starting my day at two o'clock. Yurt, Rome Far Rock was popping. In the back of the slum. I gotta find something to sit this uh I gotta find some I gotta find a way to finesse this. In the back of the slump. You're my darling, darling baby. You're my darling, darling love. You're my darling, darling baby. It's my darling, darling love. Yeah. Dardell Joss, it was poppin'. Big Dice was really good. Brother Grim, what up? Gotti Savage, what's really? In the back of the slum. Uh, that Bustello hitting too heavy for 2, 2 p.m. You heard? All right, I can't do this coffee no more. I don't like to litter, but you know how it is in the hood. There's no garbage can. It's not a garbage can in sight. So I'll just leave this here for whatever animals drink coffee, insects and things. Take one more, take one more swig for the go. Thought I spilled it on me. I was like, last swig. Mm mm mm. Hot as fish grease out here today, man. I'm drinking a hot ass cup of Bustello. I'm bugging out. Stupid bacon. Kevin Bacon. Speaking of Kevin Bacon, I watched the movie the other day with Kevin Bacon. That shit was tight whack, my nigga. But we keep it real. That horror joint, I don't know. I forgot what channel, what station it was on or whatever. But. That shit was tight whack, Kevin Bacon. You got us. I don't know, is this something about Kevin Bacon's face? When black people see Kevin Bacon, we watch it. Oh, that's my nigga right there. Why, why, is he, why is he our nigga like that? What has he done to get accepted into the Negro League, Kevin Bacon? Maybe it's just your last name is Bacon. That's what it is. I think... Your last name is Bacon, and the majority of the world loves bacon, so they fuck with you, Kevin Bacon. You heard? You know, these stars be having fake names and shit. Keither Sutherland. Keither. Who the fuck name is Keither? That should be a scam. Sean Summers was popping. Dawn Dynasty was really good. <coughs> Finesse the Dawn smoking some good purple right now. <coughs> Smoking some good Barney. You heard? Smoking some good Barney right now. Matt Russell was really good. Katie Kidd was really. New fruit corn dropping at 3 p.m. You heard? I mean, y'all niggas see the schedule. Y'all see the schedule, and I'm going to keep it real with you. I may be forced to drop two episodes one of these days of this week, man. I don't know, man, because I got too much heat backed up and i ain't even got all my heat scheduled i got all type of heat and some of them ain't on the premiere schedule yet because i don't want to blow it up you heard but i'm gonna tell you my nigga part one to that shaw wells is dropping friday shout out to the whole far rock america you heard part one to the shaw wells i'm gonna keep it real me and shaw wells did a movie we did a, a movie you heard but i'm dropping part one 
And I'm going to keep it real, my nigga. I never laughed. I haven't laughed as hard as I laughed fucking with that nigga Shaw Wells. Know what I mean? I haven't laughed that hard on an interview in a long time, my nigga. That nigga had me almost about to piss on myself. You heard? Because I'm going to tell you something about them dudes. Him and Pac-Man. You know, niggas is thugs and gangsters and all of that. Real niggas. But in another life, in another dimension, them niggas was comedians, my nigga. You heard? Because that nigga Pac-Man used to be having me crying in HDM. You heard? I'm talking about crying. You heard? And I was facing going back up north and all type of shit. And that nigga still used to have me crying. And Shy Wells ain't no different. And these niggas don't even be trying to be funny. That's the crazy shit. They don't be trying to be funny. They just some funny motherfuckers. Pac-Man, I promise you. Pac-Man, I promise you. That nigga's a viral sensation waiting to go viral. I'm telling you, if that nigga, if the right nigga see him on TikTok, he gonna blow, bro, because that nigga's fucking hilarious. Now I mean? Go on that nigga Facebook page, Pac-Man, and, and look at the shit that nigga be posting. That shit, that nigga be having me dying. You heard? So, niggas be having all type of talents, man. Niggas be having all type of talents that's 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 untapped in. You feel what I'm saying? Straight up, niggas. A lot of niggas we had talents. We just ain't never get no opportunities with those talents. You feel me? But you put a nigga on that stage. I told y'all niggas, man. I never forget the time we I, I did a play in 298. We did a play in 298, my nigga. Right? And, and I had a part in the play. Now, I mean, this is in Brownsville. It's like 85 or something. You heard 86. We had a play in 298, my nigga. And, you know, I had a part in the play. And I, I had never been on stage in front of nobody. I was scared to death. I th At first, I wasn't scared. At first, I was like, I could do this. And then when I, it was time to, the two minutes to go on, nigga got stage fright. Like, oh, shit, I'm about to go. I looked behind the curtain. The whole Brownsville was out there. You heard? I said, God damn. I'm like, yo, I don't know if I could do this, but I ended up getting on stage. Me and my man, I forgot who was with me, but me and my man was playing two clowns with clown uniforms on, and we were supposed to do silly shit. And I was forced to pick it up in order to save the show, my nigga. Like, I forgot what happened, but something didn't go how it was rehearsed and niggas was stuck so now i had to think quick bro i did some shit where they they had an inflatable dumbbell on the floor right they had an inflatable dumbbell on the floor big inflatable dumbbell so i said what am i gonna do so i picked up the dumbbell right i'm like what am i gonna do my nigga to make these people laugh I picked up the dumbbell. Everybody in the whole audience was quiet, son, because they didn't know what I was going to do. And I didn't know what I was going to do. Bro, I picked that shit up and held it up in the air like this. And I just said, you're going to have to take one for the team, nigga. You heard? And I just leaned forward like this and fell dead on my face, holding the dumbbell. The whole fucking crowd went crazy. Ah! 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 Niggas was going crazy, son. You heard? And I got up, I did some more, you know, I'm a natural silly nigga. That's when I found out that I was a natural silly nigga. You heard? So I did some more silly shit and niggas was crying, son. And after the show, my teacher was like, yo, you saved the show with that shit that you did. You know what I mean? Improv. Like, it was straight improv, bro. And then from that day, I said, yo, I think I could, I, I think if I'm putting it on the spotlight, I'm, I think I'll be able to make some motherfuckers laugh, my nigga. You heard? But you know how life goes. I ended up in the penitentiary with a murder charge facing 25 to life by 16 years old. You know, this is how it goes for us in Brownsville, Brooklyn. You feel me? So, you know, the cards wasn't stacked like that, but now we reshuffling the cards. Yep. Sir Early, what's poppin'? Gnarly dude, what's really good? Alexander Crocker, I'm just standing in some shade because it's so hot. I'm trying to find shade. It's real out here, my nigga. It's hot. 
Gap gang in the building, you're already snow bunny. All praises due to our exalted leader, Michael Strahan. You heard? The king of the Gap gang. And you got that white chick too. She's the queen of the gap. I forgot her name. That white actor chick that got the mad wild gap in her mouth. You heard? She's the first lady of the Gap gang. I'm going to find out her name. The white actress, actress chick. She got the stupid crazy gap. But Michael Strahan is the exalted leader. You heard if Michael Strahan hit me up right now and be like, yo, I need you to kill 14 niggas that don't got gaps in their mouth. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to put that work in. You heard if that nigga Michael Strahan hit me and be like, yo, I got an embassy that need to go, my nigga. Gap gang. I'm like, damn, my nigga. I was doing this YouTube shit and all of that, but I got to go to the pen. Because, you know what I mean? Gap gang duty done called. A couple of dentists... A couple of dentist officers got to get blown off the map, you know? Niggas hit me up, yo, yo, this Stray, what up? I'd be like, damn, what up, Stray? He'd be like, yo, listen, there's two dentist spots. They closing gaps down there on the Upper West Side, man. You heard they done closed four gaps this week. They got to go. He'd be like, damn, man, damn, I had 50,000 subscribers. Damn, I'm going to the can. Don't blow the motherfucking dentist spots off the map, nigga. I ain't here closing gas. My my daughter's a real one. You know, my daughter Feeney, she in some she in sleepaway camp now, but I ain't crazy. She out there with her mom's is one of the counselors. But she in sleepaway camp right now. Stressed. My baby stressed like she in the pen. I said, I told you that month, that month is long, baby. You gotta keep it two weeks. When I was in fresh air fun, I did two and I was stressed. She trying to do a month away. She hurting. I said, I got you, man. Don't worry. But um yeah, Afini, who I named after Tupac's mother, Afini Shakur, she get mad, I tell her that every day. I be like, remember, your name is going to open doors for you, nigga. And later on in life, when you go places, nigga be like, oh, excuse me, your name is Afini? After Afini Shakur, she be like, yeah, all right, come in. You got the job, real talk. You heard? So, you know what I mean? I gave you a, a serious name, bruh. But anyway, Afini, is a, a, she got the same big-ass gap as I got. And she go to the dentist and shit, like, you know, uh, you know, a real, she go to like a real private dentist. And they keep trying to tell her, yo, close your gap, close your gap. She not trying to hear it, bro. My baby like, nah, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. I live with the gap the way it is. You understand what I'm saying? So that's going to be my successor to the gap game. When I get too old to be running this shit under straight hand, my daughter's going to come in the game. You know what I mean? Gap game, you heard? All my kids got the gap, bro. My oldest daughter got a small ass gap, but my my other three kids, all of them got the big ass gap. That's how you could tell. You already know what it is. That's L A Z. That's the trademark. That's why the name of my kids' group is called the Gaps. Dirt. But um, my Hannah, my my ten year old, she got the gap. Some funny shit, man. Because you know I got two kids with my wife right now. We got a pig and a dragon. Chinese sign. My my ten year old is a is a pig. I mean a dragon, and my youngest two year old is a pig. And then I'm a dragon, and she's a pig. So we had a male pig and a female dragon. How crazy is that, my nigga? So in the house is two dragons and two pigs. You feel what I'm saying? And if you look up in the zodiac, some deep shit. Elijah Muhammad said it a long time ago. I can't remember exactly what he said. I don't want to misquote it, but y'all know what I'm talking about when he said. The woman, the people, the, the person that's compatible for you is half your age plus, I can't remember what number, but half your age plus, and that shit is a fact, my nigga. It is a fact. I forgot the exact quote. It may be plus seven, but I I don't want to misquote the bro, but you know what I mean? Elijah said that, yo, you're, you're, you're the, the, the chick that's the most compatible for you that you meant to be with is half your age plus whatever you feel what i'm saying and that shit is accurate nigga it's accurate you heard but um yeah man shout out to my monkeys w williams was popping you know monkeys and dragons got a 10 a 10 out of 10 compatibility i fuck with monkeys you heard your monkey chicks though y'all different monkey chicks is different man they don't give a fuck Monkey chicks is like niggas. They don't give a fuck about nothing. My 
My fault, I'm reading y'all nigga shit right quick. Fly Vernon was populated. <clears throat> Chico Low was really good. What's going on? Yeah, I knew Papa Jock. I got a couple of stories on the page about Papa Jock. Me and Papa Jock was in green together. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to the bro, Papa Jock. I got a story on the channel about how Papa, how Papa Jock saved my life one day. When I was trapped in a wild club in East New York by myself. You heard? If y'all ain't, ain't never see that story, put in St. Laz. Uh, put in St. Laz. Uh, trapped in the club. St. Laz trapped in the club. There's two parts to the story. There's a part we was up north. There's one part of the story. is a green story. When Papa Jock. When niggas ended up getting into it with the Muslims over Papa Jock. And then um, I seen son in the streets. I told both stories, man. You gotta hear them shits. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you know, I was, I was, I was blessed to come across a lot. You know, and it's deep, bro, because you know where I come from, Brownsville, my nigga. Like, you got a lot of good dudes, man. And you know, them streets, of them streets ruin niggas' lives, my nigga. Niggas get in them streets, start fucking with them drugs and them guns, and that shit ruins niggas' whole lives, man. A lot of these dudes that went on to be murderers and robbers and stick up kids these motherfuckers could have been politicians and motherfucking uh, uh, uh lawmakers you feel what i'm saying these niggas could have been anything you feel me but when you grow up when you grow up in a in a in a place where it's infested with drugs and guns the opportunities is limited and when you cram thousands and thousands and thousands of poor people in a condensed little area and expect them niggas to survive and get along which is impossible because everybody's trying to eat off the same three dollars people turn into shit my nigga because mostly every nigga that you hear on this channel that was gangsters and killers and cutting 20 niggas on the island at one point in time bro they was good kids my nigga they was good bright kids man know what i mean real talk like i be thinking about one of my mans that got killed from the ville you feel me like this nigga I mean, I don't even want to mention names and shit, but my son, you know what I mean, son got killed for my projects. And it's like, that nigga was a straight A student all his life, my nigga. I remember when niggas used to tease him and call him a nerd. And be like, oh, this nigga's a nerd, nigga. This nigga, man, smart ass nigga. Like, I remember when niggas used to be, be like, yo, this nigga right here be getting fucking great, A plus in every grade, you feel what I'm saying? Like, he was that type of nigga. And eventually, son got into the streets late. Like, he eventually got into the streets. And son ended up dying, man. You know what I mean? His son ended up getting murdered. You feel what I'm saying? And it just it just bothers me to this day because I remember when I remember being in 298 with son and how smart son was. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I remember him being at the top of uh, 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 the students' lists of your smartest kids and highest test scores. And, and I remember how his grandmother or whoever was taking care of him would dress him son was always fresh and always neat and clean and the nigga just excelled in school and then eventually he went into the streets my nigga and he went into the streets because you know like after high school you just in the hood my nigga you feel me like you know i don't know what niggas college situations is and money situations i don't know about that but i know niggas just be in the hood and eventually you know it ain't that you really going in the streets, it's that your friends is in the streets, niggas you grew up with is in the streets, and you start hanging with them niggas. And then a nigga test you, you feel me? And now you a regular nigga, but some nigga test you where he make you gotta bust your gun. You feel me? And now you a gangster, or what's considered a gangster cause you shot a nigga. You feel me? Yo, I got a, yo, word to everything I love. I got a series that I wrote years and years and years ago. You know, everything is written in the book of life and the scriptures cannot be broken. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, as much as we think we, you know, we out here doing what we do, we out here pawns on the chess table of life. You feel what I'm saying? And the universe is God in our moves and teaching us lessons. You understand what I'm saying? And we spiritually, we are spiritually evolving and learning with the lessons that we learn in life. Everybody has a different lesson to learn in life. You know what I mean? Your lesson to learn in life might be forgiveness. Another dude lesson to learn in life may be, you know, how to stand on his two and be strong. Everybody got different lessons in life. You know what I mean? And we don't really know which one is ours. But I tell you this, bro. I wrote some shit a long time ago. You know what I mean? 
Let me see what time it is, because I don't want to slide into the episode by mistake. Pause. Oh, man. I got this bag on, on my waist like this because I got a hole in this shirt. You know what I mean? And you can see it without the bag in the front. But, nigga, I paid $45 for this shirt, nigga. I'm wearing this shirt, nigga. You hurt? Hole and all, nigga. Yo, 2.24, 3 o'clock. All right, we got enough. We got some time. So, boom, I wrote this shit, right? This is my word, right? You know, listen, let me tell you something else, too. I also had an idea for a show now. I had an idea for a new web series that I'm eventually do on this channel, right? Where I just basically come on here and I get other dudes to come on here. You know what I mean? KX, appreciate that donation, my brother. You understand what I'm saying? I come over, I come on here and get other dudes to come on here and basically pitch their movie ideas. We ain't pitching them to nobody. We just giving out the movie ideas um, for the for the gem pop community to, to, to say how they feel about it. Is it dope? What should we add on to that? What would be better if we did it like, you know what I mean? Shit like that. So I'm gonna start coming on here and pitching my motherfucking movie and TV ideas because if I don't, like the ideas I be having is so billionaire-y like, I'm talking about with the budget that you would need to film these shits that I, I got to pitch them, bro, because it ain't nobody in the hood. We not getting that shit done in the hood. You understand what I'm saying? Like, a nigga need Holly. Need, nigga need that Holly. You heard? Nigga need Tyler, man. I'm telling you. I'm Tyler Perry. Me and that nigga, like, we going to we gonna have to get some business in with Tyler Perry, my nigga, because that nigga's a maniac. You heard? With the films. Like, all he need is a real motherfucker like me around him. I mean to make sure he put out the realest movies ever. Know what I mean, let me do some writing for you, TP. But um, check it, right? So I wrote this script. Now I wrote like six, seven episodes of this. I'm talking about long episodes, bro. I was in a zone when I was writing this shit, right? And I'm mad and I'm hurt because I lost four episodes. How I lost them? I don't know. I didn't back them up the right way. They didn't save the right way. I just lost four fucking episodes that I wrote out. And it really hurt me. Like, when you bust your imagination to write some shit and then you lose it, it really, really hurts you. So because of that, I fell back from writing the whole shit. But I still know what I wrote. But I just don't feel like writing those four episodes over again is disgusting. But basically, I'm going to give you the synopsis of... The, the, the television show. The television show is called Freedom. If you put it, I don't know if I took this off my page or not. I might have took it off my page because I don't want no copyright game, playing no games. But um, the show is called Freedom. And basically, Freedom is a dude that lives in Brownsville that basically his pops was a major guard body dude, a major thug and a gangster. His uncle was a major guard body dude, a major thug and a gangster. His pops is dead, his, his uncle is, is in the can doing life, and that's basically his mentor in the streets that he communicates and goes to see his uncle all the time back and forth in the streets who's giving him jewels on how to survive and stay alive out there. You feel what I'm saying? And basically, Freedom is not a gangster, he's not a thug, he's not none of that, but he is not a sucker, and he's the type of nigga that he done fought everybody in his neighborhood and whooped niggas' ass and all of that when they was kids, so he has a certain level of respect in his hood, but he's not in the streets and he doesn't condone the streets or drug selling or none of that shit but all the niggas who do do that they his mans and they got love for him and they understand that he just not a street nigga he a working ass nigga that happens to live in brownsville you understand what i'm saying but son is a good dude he speaks to kids and his off time he comes to school he, he has a program where he speaks to um 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 inner city youth an underprivileged youth now i mean major gains i appreciate that donation my brother appreciate you Know what I mean? So boom, right? So freedom, he's that type of dude. Like he speaks to kids. He come, he talks to kids about, you know, crime prevention and gang prevention and all of that. And he's just a real nigga, but he's not a street, stupid street nigga. He's an educated guard body nigga, a new age type of guard body nigga just living in Brownsville. He got knowledge of self. He's not on some super militant guard body shit. He just a nigga with knowledge of self laying low. You feel me? But he lives in Brownsville houses and his neighborhood is out of control, right? So what happens to freedom is, what's gonna happen to freedom in this series is all the shit that he was ever against, he's gonna become not wanting unwillingly. He's gonna become a drug dealer. He's gonna become a gangster and he never wanted all of it. This is how it starts off. 
he teach he talks to youth he talks to youth right now boom one of the kids in the class in brownsville that he talks to in his class right he comes to find out that this kid's mother is locked up right now the kid is already you know growing up in a fucked up household with a thought ass mother doing thought shit with this kid growing up niggas in and out the house selling drugs in and out the house shit like that she gets locked up when they run down on her crib and find drugs in her crib you understand what i'm saying she gets locked up somehow you know through family son you know how dudes finagle they wait finagle kids out of going in the system yo he gonna stay with his aunt whatever 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 they did to finagle that kid still being in the apartment while his mom's is locked up she ain't doing no real time she only doing like 60 days on the island you heard but while he's on while she's on the island hold on now some of these details i wrote down i don't remember every single detail i still got the first two three episodes i still got them somewhere i think you heard the first two episodes i think three episodes i still got them but some of the details i may get wrong i gotta read it over so boom the kid finagles his way to stay from to um staying in the motherfucking in the house while his mom's uh goes through that time and her boyfriend is basically still in there now that's not really the kid's stepfather that's just the, the mom's boyfriend so freedom speaks to this sees the dude in the class one day and sees that his clothes is all dirty and he stink he could smell he like yo what's up with you what's good and he tells for yo my mom's they was gonna try to take me in the acs but we finagled it out of here boom 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 bang so um so the nigga freedom is like yo bro here man i'm gonna take you out he, he takes the kid takes the little dude to burger king or whatever eat hat feeds the dude gives the dude a little 20 dollars for his pocket yo man you know what i mean you need anything you let me know and don't be telling the school that i took you here into because i'm not supposed to be interacting with the kids boom 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 so basically freedom and the little kid got a little relationship going where he's a he's an older dude that he's he looks up to because he don't even want to be around the street shit, this little kid right this shit is deep so <clears throat> one day the little kid comes to school like two days later with a with with, with a like a black eye with like a mark under his eye so freedom is like yo what's up what happened you got a fight in here and he don't want to talk he like yo little nigga let's go we, let's go tell me what happened so shorty tells him yo my mom's boyfriend I mean, I forgot what I wrote that the kid did in the house, but my mom's boyfriend, boom, 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 and he smacked me. He smacked me and like cut my cut under my eye. So freedom is furious. Freedom, like what? He smacked you, man. The next scene, you just see him walking. Now the kid lives in Tilden. The kid lives in Tilden Projects. So now they walking through Brownsville houses, cutting through to get to Dumont. You understand what I'm saying? Now. They go, they go, next scene, them niggas is knocking on the Tilden apartment door. So this nigga, the mom's boyfriend, answers the door. He got niggas in there, music playing. Them niggas in there doing whatever they do. He opened the door, he like this. He look, he see freedom is there with the little nigga. He like, oh, what's up, nigga? He like, yo, my name's such and such, blah, 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 blah. You know, I know such and such. He said, you know, somebody put hands on him, son. He like, yo, nigga, you, you, you work for, you work for the city? You work for ass? You work for the school? He like, nah, I just do. He was like, yo, nigga, then don't you ever knock on this motherfucking door again, nigga. The fuck is wrong with you, nigga? And niggas come to the door like this, ripped up. Yo, what's up? Yo, who this, son? They like some fucking nigga, corn that corn, cornball ass nigga knocking on the fucking door like he police. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. And they grab the little nigga and bring him in. <clears throat> so now Freedom is like, oh, they got the little nigga in there. They probably going to put hands on him. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. And matter of fact, the little nigga tells him, like, yo, I don't want to go up there and confront him because he a, he a, he a wild, he a rageful dude and this and that. And he like, man, fuck that. Ain't nobody going to be putting hands on no little kids. He could go to jail for that shit. So Freedom goes up there. Like I said, niggas back out on the nigga, whatever. The little nigga is in there, son. So the nigga Freedom really wants to go back that day and go make sure that little nigga's high. But he knows where that's going to lead to. Somebody going to get shot or killed. So he waits till the next day. The next day he sees Shorty in school again. Shorty like, yo, a nigga put hands on me again, smacked me in front of all of those niggas, told me don't you ever bring a nigga. So now freedom is furious, my nigga. So now he's furious, my nigga. And he knows what type of nigga. Now this nigga, that, that freedom, this nigga that freedom is um, um, the little kid's um, mother's boyfriend, he's a straight gangster and a drug dealer. 
and he's from Tilden. He's a straight gangster and a drug dealer, and niggas know not to fuck with him. He's a wild boy. You feel me? So Freedom finds out who the, the little nigga tells him, yo, let me tell you who this dude is. Boom, boom, boom. Then they show a backstory of this nigga and the type of gun work he be putting in in the hood so the viewers could know this nigga's dangerous. You feel what I'm saying? So boom. Freedom bumps into this dude. I forgot his name. He's in all of this shit is in my in my notes. He bumps into his man. His man was his right hand man all his life. They grew up in school all their life together, right? But his man went astray because his mom's his mom. He had a mom's like freedom also had a mom's on drugs, shit like that. We're going to get into that. You feel what I'm saying? He's one of the few dudes who had parents on drugs and in the streets and he did not succumb to the streets. You know those type of niggas. My cousin Jamel is one of those niggas. Like his mom's pop, they was going through all of that shit, but he he just ain't want no parts of the streets, drugs, nothing. And he went that away. You feel what I'm saying? And that's the type of nigga freedom is. But his other man, who mother was on drugs and, and parents in the streets, he became a gangster. But he was his best friend all his life growing up. And we're going to show the backstory of how tight these little niggas was growing up. And now they grown. They live in the projects together. And he always trying to tell Freedom, yo, nigga, come get money with me out here. I need a nigga that I could trust with me. Nigga, I'm out here doing this. That I... And Freedom like, nigga, you know I don't want no parts of that, nigga. I mind my business. I ain't preaching to you. You my nigga. I love you. But you know I don't want no parts of that dumb shit. And you need to stop fucking with that dumb shit too so they always teasing each other like that but freedom calls that nigga yo now there's another scene i wrote that's bananas where his man showed him the him his man shows him the hammer in the base in the um, lobby of the building and because freedom ain't no ain't no ain't no cornball he like guns and shit like that like any other nigga he's just not a street nigga you feel what i'm saying so is a scene where he shows him the hammer. Like, yeah, nigga. He like, yo, nigga, where you, let me see that. Where you get that from? And he like, yo, nigga, you know, I know you ain't on no bullshit out here, but if any one of these niggas ever violate, son, you fucking call me, son. So he calls his man, yo, yo, you know who this nigga is from Tilden? Boom, boom, boom. He like, yeah, I know who the fuck that nigga is. Why, what's up with that nigga? And he like, yo, that nigga just backed out a hammer on me. Then he got this little kid up in there, and I know they doing this little kid wrong. And niggas is like, yo, you know, what, what, and Freedom don't want to call the cops. You know, he can't do shit like that. Even though he not a street nigga, he's in Brownsville. He can't be calling the cops on no niggas. And ACL, he can't do none of that. You feel what I'm saying? So he like, I want to get this little nigga out that house. I don't want to involve no motherfucking police. But I know what time it is with this nigga. So, bro, that nigga man gives him the ratchet. He said, I don't want you coming over there with me. I'm going to do this myself. Just give me the ratchet. So the nigga, he know better than to go knock on the nigga door. Freedom waits to see the nigga in the streets in Tilden, like coming back from the store with a bunch of three, four niggas and all of that. And he runs down on the nigga on some polite shit, not even one of He like, listen, man, um, I need you to do me a favor. Let 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 the little dude come stay with me till his mother come home from the can. So the little nigga, the, so the nigga like, what? What? Yo, nigga, didn't I fucking tell you to stay the fuck away from me? Son, shit get hot and heavy. The nigga Freedom pulls out the hammer and hits the nigga. Pa 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 and just runs through the motherfucker. Hits the nigga and runs back to Brownsville. Now, all of this shit is in crazy slow motion and abstract because now he done shot a nigga. This the nigga who be preaching to niggas to get out the streets. He done shot two. Uh, he done shot this nigga and blamed that the rest of them niggas probably hit a couple. I can't remember exactly what I wrote, but they blaming. They shooting across the street from Brownsville until then the nigga running back to his building in, in Brownsville, right? Son, the police pull up on the scene. The kid that got shot gets caught with a hammer. You feel what I'm saying? The nigga that he that with the kid, he gets shot. He gets caught with a fucking hammer, my nigga. You heard? And the nigga has to go up top for two joints. And the little nigga comes stay with freedom, right? The little nigga comes there. This nigga breaking the law with this little nigga coming to stay with him. So now his mans is like, listen, when that nigga come home from the can, like it's going to be beef between them niggas while he's in the can. But when that nigga come home from the can, he's going to want to murder you, my nigga. And he got a whole bunch of influence and a whole bunch of niggas out here. So you going to have to fuck with the team if you're going to survive out here, my nigga. So now Freedom starts fucking with all of these niggas in his projects that he felt is doing stupid shit and shooting and robbing for no reason. Now he needs them niggas. And being that he's the smartest nigga, he starts controlling what's going on, my nigga. This shit gets deep. This shit gets deep. It gets crazy deep. Because 
Son is also a rapper that quit the rap game and he don't fuck with it no more because he was trying to get on for years and nobody fucked with him, but he's super nice. But nobody fucks with him, so he left it alone. And he gets pissed off when niggas be like, yo, son, what up? You still rapping? He be like, nigga, please stop asking me about that rap shit. I don't do it no more. That's his attitude. You feel what I'm saying? Son, listen. <sighs> this nigga comes home from the can. When this nigga comes home from the can, he brings the war to Brownsville houses. And it becomes a Brownsville versus Tilden war where it gets so bloody that it makes the news, my nigga. It starts making the news for bodies dropping in shootouts every night, a war that can't be stopped. The residents are, are scared of, for their lives. They can't go nowhere, bro. That's how it gets crazy. You feel me? And in the middle of it is freedom, son. And he's going back up north to see his uncle and his uncle was telling him how to get down. Yo, listen, this is what you do. You understand what I'm saying? Son, he takes over. He starts running a drug operation in Brownsville houses, right? He's such a smart nigga. They start getting stupid money. And he comes to find out, boom, the drug dealer nigga that he bangs out with, he ends up killing this nigga, bro. And when he kills this nigga, he becomes that nigga in Brownsville. He does not want that those type of accolades. And he's mad that he has become a killer. You feel me? But when he kills this nigga, the whole Brownsville kind of goes under submission because the nigga he killed was a maniac. So now he's that nigga. So now he's controlling the whole drug operation on that side of Brownsville, right? And he comes to find out that the nigga he killed was in bed with police, with Brownsville police. He was in bed with them getting, basically selling drugs for them. And that's why he was in power and such a maniac because his partners was the police. Now, I mean, not on no snitch shit, on some dirty cop shit. Like, they was hitting him with bricks of dope to move throughout the hood. So now that they ki he kills this nigga, the police wanna, is, is going to press him. Like, yo, you killed our plug out here? Now you got to be our plug out here. And Freedom is like, what? That's what was going on? It's y'all niggas that's flooding my community with that heroin? Nigga, I ain't do we ain't doing none of that. Y'all ain't getting none of this money. You understand what I'm saying? So now he starts to go to war with the police. And then it gets so deep, he starts exposing these niggas for corruption. And then he starts rapping. It gets crazy. He starts rapping and putting out fucking revolutionary records that got the whole Brownsville at arms to a point where you can't even come in Brownsville houses no more. Nobody. It's a, it has become an occupied war zone and the shit is making the news every day and they like yo the feds is talking about they're gonna send tanks in there and niggas is like don't do it because innocent people gonna get killed bye 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 and they start holding brownsville down like a like a fortress and they start saying yo listen these police is trying to kill us out here they the ones putting this dope out here and we can't trust the media the cops the fed we can't trust nobody so until this situation is together we gonna hold this shit down like a like a fucking uh, war zone and freedom starts going viral on the internet for talking this revolutionary shit in brownsville where the whole country gets behind him and he becomes a sensation and he starts putting out records while wanted by the federal government and holding the whole brownsville hostage like a war zone you feel me then it gets political my nigga it gets political the feds run down on his uncle in the in the can to make sure he can't communicate with him because he was the one giving him the juice son the shit gets crazy but freedom becomes like a martyr for brownsville to clean up the whole brownsville to rid it from drugs and gangs and yo the shit gets crazy bro and all the gangsters and the thugs that's around him that was just straight gangsters and thugs now them niggas have a purpose and now they all famous because they around him on the internet armed up with AKs and all that in the middle of Brownsville on top of the roof. Now I mean holding fort where niggas can't even come in the buildings. My nigga, this shit get crazy, bro. It gets crazy. And this shit is called freedom. You heard? And the only way it's going to go down is with a monster budget. Because I want to film in Brownsville on location. And I want every human being in Brownsville to have a part in the fucking series, my nigga.
And I'm going to turn, uh, my dream is to turn everybody into in Brownsville that's in them streets into known famous actors, my nigga, where they forced to give up the streets. They like, nigga, I'm too famous for this shit. I can't be running around doing this and doing that. I got fans out here. You feel what I'm saying? Change the whole financial landscape of the whole Brownsville, my nigga. The whole Brownsville will be getting a check. You take a hundred niggas in the streets running around busting guns and you get them niggas parts in this series and you and you make these niggas become good actors and them niggas get a check in the mail every fucking month from HBO. You understand what I'm saying? And niggas like, nigga, I ain't selling no drugs out here, nigga. I'm getting fucking $30,000 check in a month every, every month. I'm gooch. You feel what I'm saying? And this is the show Freedom, my nigga. And the nigga's a vegetarian, and he's a funny motherfucker. Because in the show, throughout the series, because, you know, some of the shit is based on my character. You heard? But in, throughout the series, every episode, he finds a way to get into an argument with some type of merchant that doesn't sell a vegetarian product. You heard? Nigga be cursing out the Franks then. Yo, bro, when the fuck you gonna get vegetarian Franks, my bro? Them shit's been in the supermarket for 20 years, 10 years already. When you gonna get some hot dogs and what the fuck is wrong with you? A nigga be arguing with all type of vendors. You understand what I'm saying? But it's crazy, son, because the nigga that was the least expected to be, the nigga that was always preaching to other niggas like, yo, nigga, y'all niggas in the streets doing stupid shit. It's crazy because the on the opening ep episode, he's sleeping like, and in, in my mind, he lives in that building that um in Brownsville houses right off of Rockaway um where niggas used to play um baseball not the big baseball field where niggas used to play baseball in the middle of the projects that little small shit behind one of the buildings on on Rockaway where we used to pitch we used to practice pitching there like just throwing the ball pitching I should have been a pitcher I was trying to be a hitter but I should have been a pitcher you heard cuz I was nice I was nasty but you know that one building where you coming down Rockaway know what I mean and you go into the little little the little entrance on Brownsville, that one building. The nigga Robert used to live there. And motherfucking um uh I don't know if Dink was living in that building. But Robert used to live there. And his little brother, can't remember niggas' names, John, Fat John, I mean, that's the bro, I mean, I think so, I'm not sure I don't know. I ain't gonna say something passed away, but Fat John, they used to live in that building right there. You feel what I'm saying? And that's the building that's in my mind that freedom lives in because that building is dangerous because it's right on Blake. You heard? So it'd be all type of crazy shit going down. And um, in the in the first opening scene, son is in the bed sleeping at like three, four in the morning and he's awoken to extreme gunshots and he looks out his window. Now, I mean, he's awoken to a mad commotion and he looks out his window and niggas is backing down a dice game behind his building. And you know, one of the niggas try to run and niggas gun that nigga down and say, nigga, I fucking said don't move. And niggas gun the nigga down in the middle of the street, take the money, hop in the whip and, and peel off. And he starts getting up and getting ready for work. Shit crazy. He got a girlfriend. His girlfriend is a mad funny motherfucker. Like I said, bro. Now I mean, I be writing them scripts, bro. And this was this was years and years ago I wrote this shit. But I knew I know it's gonna be fire. But let me stop ignoring y'all niggas messages. Capo Chef was really good. Jason FNJ is burning out here. I'm sweating bullets walking back and forth. But I'm getting my walk exercise in right now. You heard Larry Gunn was really Mo Money TV. Eric Taylorson, Gotti Savage, Sean Summers was popping, Matt Russell. Political scientist was populating. I appreciate you, bro. Dro was really good. Chinky Eye was really. Jimmy Olive was populating. Wise was really good. Jonathan Jackson, Goat Lady, was popping. Dorian Smith was popping. Leon Waymack, what up? Red Room Podcast was populated, my bro. Gemstone was really. War Games was popping. Wayno, No Gas TV, what up? Alberto Rojas was really good. Finesse the Dawn was popping. Alexander Crocker was really. Yeah, bro. But yeah, nah, that's some shit that I wrote, man. That's some shit that I wrote. There's a series called Freedom, you know what I mean? And it's about a dude that never thought he would be in the streets that ends up running the whole streets. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of political shit. It's a lot of guard body undertones. It's a lot of uh, police corruption undertones. 
You feel what I'm saying? Based on real actual shit. Because if you do the if you do the research on the 75th precinct and the 77th precinct, you know what I mean? You'll find books written on the corruption in these precincts. You feel what I'm saying? So we just be dealing with some real, you know what I mean, historic shit mixed with real life shit mixed with fiction. You feel me? But I would love to, my dream is to one day come to Brownsville and amongst Livonia Avenue is just like 15 Hollywood trailers going down under the train station all the way down to Junius. You feel me? Just Hollywood trailers. And we out there. You know when they did Brooklyn's Finest, the 73rd Precinct refused to give them niggas security. They said, listen, this area is highly dangerous where people are getting shot and killed all the time. We highly recommend that y'all do not set up no trailers and film nothing over here. And they did, they still did it. And the 73rd said, well, we're not giving y'all no security. So basically, they had them Hollywood trailers out there on their own with no security, bro. And they still got that movie film. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, niggas could be civilized when, it when it's time to be civilized, bro. But my in my dream, I want 20 motherfucking trailers all the way way down to juniors from motherfucking Livonia and Rockaway all the way down to juniors you understand what I'm saying like real talk that's how that's that's how I want that shit and everybody in the hood that deserves to be in that film will be in that film my nigga and that shit will last for 10 years on HBO like the wire you heard and Brownsville will be so caught up in the show that they will have no time for nothing extra niggas be like man listen nigga I need to get my part in this motherfucker. You heard? That's how real. Yeah, that's why you gotta talk about it, my nigga. Like I said, wisdom brings forth understanding. When you speak about things, you teach yourself shit that you don't, you didn't even know. That's why you have to speak about shit. If you keep it bottled in, you won't even have some of the answers. You feel me? So when you, when, when like I said, wisdom brings forth understanding. Now, I mean, when you have the knowledge, you speak on that knowledge, and then you will have an understanding of that knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? Because you can know some shit, but you don't fully understand that shit. But Hollywood producers out there, you know, we need y'all, man. We need y'all. Key and Peele, you know, Jordan Peele. Like, Jordan Peele, let me tell you something, Jordan Peele. You be murdering those horror films, and I'm sure you did things that were other than horror. But when you ready to cross into the streets and put out the most gritty, authentic street series ever made, that's who we need, my nigga, Jordan Peele. That nigga's a visionary. He don't give a fuck. That nigga take chances. He roll the dice. He put out shit nobody would ever try to put out in Hollywood. That nigga's a bad, revolutionary motherfucker. You heard? That nigga's a bestie. Some niggas, like, you know, niggas be black and niggas think that every nigga that's black gotta be some mad hood, down home hood nigga. That's not true. A nigga could be a black revolutionary and nigga grew up in the Upper West Side around rich people, but he still understands his blackness. You feel what I'm saying? And he's a revolutionary with film, nigga. That nigga's the first nigga in the game that every film he fucking make, the lead character is black, nigga. He don't play no fucking games. Like, you understand what I'm saying? He's a film revolution. He's, that's revolution, bro. You know what I mean? That nigga is doing God's work with that shit because the more times you put out a Hollywood film with a black leading actor, the more racism you destroy out there. You make people forced to, I don't care who you are. If you sit down right now, like the other day, I was in the motherfucking park with my kids and shit, right? And this Indian, these Indian kids, was there, you know what I mean? Like moms with the Muslim rap and all that, face covered, all of that. You feel what I'm saying? And they was playing with, you know, we had a bubble gun and they was playing with that shit and I just was analyzing them kids and I'm like, yo, no matter what race and creed you are, I was falling in love with them kids from being around in 30, 30 seconds of kids. Like, you know, kids just bring that spirit in you. So I'm, I'm watching that shit, I'm like, yo, I don't give a fuck rate, what race, color, creed you are. Kids are kids, my nigga. And we all start off that way, so we are who we really are as kids. That's who we really are, my nigga. People who don't see race, because them kids came over there playing with my kid. They don't see no race, creed, color, none of that. They don't see it. You feel me? And when you watch films about different cultures, people begin to understand your culture more and say, like even with this Rikers Island legend shit and this, this channel that we putting out, it's a lot of niggas watching this channel right now that they understand gangsters and thugs a whole lot more than they used to, bro. 
They under they say, nah, I know how them niggas grew up. I understand. I said niggas was I know where they was put at when they was kids. I know what type of upbringing them niggas had. I know what type of savage facilities they housed these niggas in. Like they not just gangsters and thugs and killers. They human beings who got fucked up in the wash. You understand what I'm saying? The wash of life. You feel me? But yeah, my niggas. Yeah, bro, that new episode. Let me check the clock on that right quick. Let me see what's going down. Oh, yeah, that new episode is dropping in six minutes, bro, skis. And that's another thing I'm going to use this six minutes to talk about, like, right? This Bronx and Brooklyn shit, like, you know what I mean? Like, I spoke about it yesterday on live, but, like, I'm going to speak about it again. You know, we putting out Bronx and Brooklyn history. We talking about shit that happened on Rikers Island 30 years ago. You know what I mean? Some good fights and cuttings and stabbings that happened. And mostly all of these people that was involved in that shit, they all grown ass men now. Some of them even fuck with each other. Niggas who done cut each other, stab each other, they fuck with each other and they mans, you feel me? So, you know, this ain't some petty little kid shit. We trying to spark up Bronx versus Brooklyn again. What we doing is we putting the spotlight on Bronx and Brooklyn and we bringing this fucking New York culture and history to a forefront instead of you know, living a life of sucking the cocks of other cities and cultures and trying to be like everybody else. We bringing the focus back to New York fucking city and the icon niggas who made New York what it was. You understand what I'm saying? Sadly, it's niggas that was thugs and gangsters in jail on Rikers Island and all that good shit. But we bringing back New York City fucking culture and we teaching y'all niggas about some different legends other than the average legends legends you hear about in New York. I'm not gonna say no names, but you know the four or five average legends you hear about in all New York City uh, shit. is other legends besides that. It's legends from my era. You understand what I'm saying? And that's this is what I'm doing with this channel. I'm painting and giving you, I'm bringing to y'all niggas the legends and the fabrics of the streets of who made New York City what it was and what it is and neighborhoods what they was and what they is. You feel what I'm saying? And there's a lot of this shit is rooted in, rooted in jail, streets, and penitentiary shit like that. You heard? So with this Bronx and Brooklyn War, we talking about history, my nigga, now. And all history is going to be some arguments, it's going to be some debates, it's going to be some feelings about shit that took place. That's how, that's how it goes in history. But by no means is we doing this shit to try to cause and start new Bronx and Brooklyn beef and friction. Nah, my nigga, we speaking 30 years ago about what happened amongst Bronx legends and Brooklyn legends. No matter who won, no matter who lost, nigga, I watch a Vietnam movie, I know that America lost that war, the United States lost that war. That don't take nothing from them veterans who fought in that war, nigga. You heard? Not from me. You heard? Them niggas may be the illest veterans of all time. The Vietnam veterans, because they fought, they lost the war. You feel me? They was fighting a war they could not win. You understand what I'm saying? So they may be the illest veterans of all time. You heard? So no matter who won, no matter who lost, veterans are veterans and warriors are warriors. So we just speaking about these things and we what we are doing at the same time is we are empowering the Bronx, Brooklyn, and New York culture, nigga. Other niggas is making channels, spawning channels. We are spreading out and empowering New York, my nigga. This is some pro New York shit. Like we love all cities and states. Everybody that supports, I love y'all. You understand what I'm saying? But you know, my city was kind of lost in the sauce for a minute where we was blowing all type of other cities off for their culture and style and thinking that these niggas is the realest niggas ever. Nah, nigga, this New York, I'm gonna show you who's the realest niggas ever. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? This is how we doing it, bro. This is how we doing it. Now I mean, we putting out that history, my nigga. But now I mean, none of this shit has any malice. None of this shit, you know what I mean? Listen, like I said, Bronx, New York is New York. The umbrella, the five boroughs, Long Island, Westchester County, and upstate New York. You feel me? We all united on this motherfucking channel. This is the New York State channel, not the Brooklyn channel, not the Bronx channel, not the New York City channel. This is the New York State channel. You feel me? And or and, and real New Yorkers, we love niggas from out of town. So you're going to see some out of towners on this channel, too. Because we ain't like other places where we don't welcome niggas be hating New York niggas. Now nah, we welcome niggas, my nigga. It's an equal opportunity city. You feel what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. My fault, man. Check, making sure I ain't missing nothing crazy.
But yeah, man, major shit is going down, man. Major shit is going down. That's my word. That's my word, major shit is going down. Y'all gonna see some major shit real soon. That video, that new episode starts in one minute. You feel what I'm saying? It's a nice double episode. It's two different subject matters on one episode. You feel what I'm saying? And it's ugly, man. And you know what it is, man. What's today? Wednesday, tomorrow, new John Ryder. That's going to get ugly. Friday, new Shawell. Saturday, I got a surprise bomb. I got a surprise bomb coming on Saturday. You feel what I'm saying? You know, y'all niggas stay tuned, bro. Y'all stay tuned, bro. But yo, listen. It's almost 3 o'clock. I need y'all dudes. There's 110 dudes that's in here. I need y'all dudes to slide over to that premiere and leave as many comments on the actual video as you can. Because you know you could... Uh, leave a comment on the video before it even starts you feel what i'm saying so i need y'all niggas to boost that algorithm up go on the comments leave about four five comments you feel what i'm saying and let's get it but it's three o'clock right now i'm sliding over to that premiere man i meet y'all dudes over there pause you heard peace